podcast teachers. Hi, this is another podcast or screencast by As Teachers. The topic here is wear a lot of hats. And for teachers, this isn't anything new. Throughout the ages, we've been asked to do various amounts of tasks, from teaching to parenting to everything that requires any sort of hat. Well, this is no different. This is a screencast on varying your teaching style. It's an effort to help you to integrate your old lessons with the new technology available. And I want you to be able to do this easily by a do-it-yourself method. Take 21st century learning to the highest of levels by having students teach, record, and present their knowledge, as well as you. But this doesn't have to be a forced type of technology for you. Technology, it doesn't make a teacher good, but it can make good teaching more effective. What is screencasting? Well, it's flipping how we teach. To be quite exact, a screencast is a visual and a verbal recording of instruction. A podcast is only verbal. A screencast brings both these methods together. Are you feeling that? Well, don't. Screencasting isn't something that should totally overwhelm you. Screencasting has become synonymous with what is known as a classroom flip. This is when students view the screencast outside of the regular school hours. And this is done in an effort to promote within class more time for student collaboration, depth of content, and hands-on learning. Screencasts have multiple usefulness within the class structure. They can be used for reviewing material by students for tests and quiz preparation. Students that are absent from school, they can use this as a way to view any missed content. They can also use this as a way for tutors or outside other educators or mothers, fathers, parents, friends to use to collaborate with them as well as with you to help in the learning process. However, perhaps the greatest use of a screencast is to put the student in front of learning as a method for them to record their instruction, present it to fellow students using actual screencasting themselves as a way to learn and learn at the highest of levels. Some examples of screencasts such as this can be found in several places. One is at the Ask Teachers YouTube channel or Mr. Hunwick's YouTube channel. Again, don't be overwhelmed. I've been teaching for 20 years and you can do this. Now this is how to create a podcast or a screencast and here's some of the materials that are needed. In terms of iOS products, you're going to need to find apps and I'm going to recommend some. Camera capability on your iOS product, iPhone, iPad, etc. does enhance the experience but it's not really necessary. Many of these apps are flat out free. The four apps or iOS apps that I'm going to be providing you with some depth are going to be this one here, Screen Chomp. Another one here is Explain Everything, Dosery, and Educreations. These are the four that I would recommend and I'll go into a bit of explanation in the time to come forward. You may also though, as I'm doing here today, create screencasts using your desktop or a laptop. Computers do need microphone video capability along with other specific computer software. It can be done in a very cost-effective way just like the iOS apps can be. We're going to begin here by looking at the iOS products for screencasting. As stated, uh, Explain Everything, which looks like this, is one that is very, very useful. Of the four, it might be the most of uh, intricate of them all. Explain everything. This is what the screen would look like on your iPad. Um, this is by Morris Cook. This is a 
purchase app. It's $2.99. Uh, as I said, it's very easy to record and edit using this. It's going to import all files. And right down here, there's an import, and you can bring in YouTube, anything that you want. Uh, it's an app that has a learning skill. I would put it more at the fair level than it is to easy. Um, it's excellent for middle school and especially for high school teachers, uh, high school teachers and students. Um, it's going to provide you probably the most recording capability. As you can see down here, uh, you're going to be able to edit your actual recording. You're going to be able to edit over any voices or change things up far much easier than any, any of the other apps provide. However, it is one will, that will take the most time to learn. This is what the screen on Dosery would look like on your iPad. And you'll notice several of the same kind of icons as you saw on Explain Everything. Record, picture download, uh, differing types of things to draw with, you, you'll notice here. Um, it's got a lot of the same features. This is probably one step lower in terms of ease to use. This one here is free, created by SP Controls. It's very versatile. I would say, as I said, much easier to use, and I would recommend it for middle school, high school type students, and for any teacher as well. The third app here that I'm recommending is EduCreations. This one also free, created by Educa EduCreations Incorporated. Far easier to use than the prior two. You can still upload pictures. I would place this one more for if you want to use, have elementary students create things to middle school. I've used it often in my eighth grade class for students. You'll notice the icons at the top here. They get far more simplistic, not as many choices, but that also limits what it can do. But this also, highly recommended. The fourth and final app that I'm going to be presenting here is called Screen Chomp, seen here. And just by the imagery of the icon for the app, you get the idea that this one might appear to be more elementary in nature. And, and it is. I would suggest using this for elementary students. But that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be used at all different levels and even by teachers. It's a fabulous app. It is created by TechSmith, which is a company in Owasso, Michigan. Um, you can download pictures and everything like that, put them on the screen. You'll notice far less choices here in terms of what you want to do, pens and eraser, etc. It records. It's a fabulous app. And the TechSmith people, if you have trouble, you can literally call them and they get back to you right away. Those are the four that I recommend the most for screencasting. If you want to get a little bit more intricate. There's some other apps called Toontastic where you create cartoons for screencasting. You can create puppets using Puppet Pals. There's also an app Smartboard. Uh, this one you can at least draw pictures and then capture the picture on your screen. Uh, Prezi, which is more of a slideshow, and Majesto is more of a movie making app. The next little segment that I'd like to go over is if you want to screencast using your laptop or desktop computer. Again, this can be done in a financially uh, easy way. Uh, the th first thing you're going to need is some type of microphone. Microphone uh, low end could be a Logitech microphone like this for $23.95, or you can go a little bit more high tech with a microphone camera. That's what I'm using, and this is high def, 720. Uh, it's $50. Now, there are different versions that allow you to screencast for free. Jing by TechSmith is free, but it limits you to five minute screencast. Or you can upgrade that to snag it by um, TechSmith as well, and that's for $50, and that's software. There's also a free uh, website called AWW, ah, and it's a web whiteboard, and you can then record like you would on a whiteboard. Now, if you have smart software, so many of the school districts have purchased this for smart boards. Um, this has a recording on it as well. However, uh, it takes a great deal of memory, and it does tend to crash, as I have noticed in my um, use of it. I am currently 
in what I'm doing right now using Snagit as my software to create this screencast. Just quickly, I'm showing you this on the screencast up here to the upper right. This was is what would appear if I were to record using the smart software. You'll notice it says page recording. Some hints that I'd like to relate to you in terms of creating screencasts um, using a desktop computer or any iOS product or app. Um, number one, use the pause button often. Avoid redos. Uh, this is going to help you out a lot. Write a script at first until you get comfortable doing this kind of thing. Uh, when using whiteboard software, write it first, then record what you've written. Uh, the majority of the time, viewers like you, you probably don't like watching someone write. Keep it short. Keep it to the point. Jing, because it's free, is five-minute limit, but it can be more than enough time to provide you the amount of information you want. Being concise is important in your screencasts. And lastly, when you're developing screencasts, you're going to want to create a YouTube channel for yourself. This is kind of like old world video meeting the new. And this will be a place where you can store, upload, and place all of your screencasts. I have one here for Ask Teachers, but I also have one my Mr. Hunwick channel personally for my classes. I know there's fear with YouTube sometimes that everybody can view it, but there are privacy settings and different ways to use them, and you can delete screencasts, reload them, etc. Creating a YouTube account is very easy. YouTube is part of Google, so the YouTube channel, it's going to automatically prompt you for your Google Plus or Gmail account. I suggest you using these so that they sync together. Um, you're going to be able to place your podcasts here, videos, store them, exchange dialogue and video, um, provide a location for students, parents, community, all to view them. And then you'll also be able to, if you have a class web page, you'll be able to place the uh, link to your website and you can provide it there for students to access all the time. Well, this is the end of this screencast, and I hope it's been helpful for you uh, in thinking about perhaps using screencasts in your everyday lesson planning. I wish you the best and thanks for being the great educator that you are.